Dear listeners, welcome to the BNTV channel. By subscribing to our channel, you can follow our independent comments on the latest news. When we look at the developments in Syria, Russia's hypocritical attitude towards the world draws attention. On the one hand, Russia, which was stuck in the Black Sea against NATO, sent warm messages to Turkey by sending Lavrov. On the other hand, although Turkey expressed its discomfort, it continued its airstrikes in Idlib. In addition, Putin's special envoy to Syria made statements this week regarding the need for the withdrawal of Turkish and U.S. troops from Syria. Russia, which is trying to maintain its position as a playmaker in Syria by making promises to Turkey and Iran, is also making moves against these forces. Last week, the Russians and the regime forces they supported bombed civilian targets near Turkish observation points in Idlib. In addition, Russia, which has air dominance in Syria, did not take any action against the bombing of the headquarters of the Iranian-backed militias in Syria. In previous reports from the region, it was said that the Russian-backed regime forces made a huge military buildup in the south of Idlib, and the Turkish army set up military checkpoints in the border areas of Idlib in response. However, the issue of demilitarizing Idlib came up during the visit of Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov to Turkey. However, they are far from reassuring as the Russian steps on the field do not match their positions at the table. According to the comment of the Azerbaijani journalist Jehun Asirov, who closely follows the moves of the Russians, Moscow and Iran are creating the plan and infrastructure for how to take down Idlib, the last fortress, remaining in the hands of the opposition. After Idlib leaves the Turkish-backed opposition, it will be the Euphrates Shield, Olive Branch and Peace Spring regions under the control of the Turkish military and Turkey-backed opposition. If these areas are lost, first Turkey and then Europe will face an unprecedented wave of refugees in the near future. At a time when these concerns were preserved, the Astana summit on Syria, which was held this week with the participation of Turkey, Iran and Russia, was of great importance. Iran, which participated in the summit, had great discomfort as its outposts in the region were hit by airstrikes by Israel and the USA last week. Although the summit emphasizes the protection of Syria's territorial integrity by giving messages of cooperation and joint work against Israel and the USA, Russian military officials keep the possibility of an operation warm by voicing the claims that the opposition may provocate chemical weapons. It also continues airstrikes in the region. Finally, images were shared from local accounts in Syria showing that Russia bombed the south of Idlib, Jabal al-Zavia and the north of the Latakia region, with warplanes on July 9 at noon. In addition, Russian President Vladimir Putin's special envoy to Syria, Alexander Lavrentyev, stated that he hoped that the Syrian and U.S. soldiers would withdraw from the region soon, before the Astana talks, and clearly expressed Russia's aim for absolute dominance here. So, what messages were given in Astana before the Russian airstrikes in Syria? And what exactly did Putin's special representative say about the American and Turkish soldiers in Syria? Russian President Vladimir Putin's special envoy to Syria, Alexander Lavrentyev, said they hope Turkish and U.S. troops will withdraw from Syria as the situation stabilizes in the near future. Lavrentyev, who held a press conference after the 16th Astana talks on Syria held in Nur Sultan, the capital of Kazakhstan, made a statement on the perspective of the withdrawal of Turkish and U.S. troops from Syria and stated that they hoped this would happen as the situation in the country stabilizes. Lavrentyev said, We hope that the U.S. presence of some Western troops in northeast Syria and Turkish troops in northwest Syria is temporary and that all these troops will be withdrawn soon as the situation stabilizes, Lavrentyev said. Explaining that they had very interesting talks with both the Syrian opposition and government representatives, Lavrentyev noted that they saw a gradual increase in trust between the opposition and the government. Lavrentyev said, This is a long process and requires the parties to take steps towards each other. We strongly believe that this will happen. Lavrentyev stated that he and the UN Special Envoy for Syria, Gare Peterson, discussed various difficulties, including the work of his own office, and the difficulties in calling for the sixth meeting of the Constitutional Committee. Lavrentyev said that they are in favor of establishing an effective and efficient mechanism for the delivery of humanitarian aid to all regions of Syria through Damascus, adding, Syria is the only country where a distorted principle of cross-border operation is applied, there is no other example of this in the world. Stating that the fight against terrorism continues to be among the priority issues even though Russia sees that the situation in Syria has gradually stabilized, Lavrentyev said, 
We must do this despite the ceasefire calls of some European countries, because the terrorist threat is still not eradicated. It could limit the efforts of both the international forces and the international community to fight terrorist organizations that still have greater potential, he added. Stating that, whitewashing, terrorists and renaming them as, moderate opposition, is unacceptable, Lavrentiev emphasized that the fight against terrorist organizations should be continued until the terrorists are finally and completely destroyed, and that there is no room for relaxation in this process. Meanwhile, Lavrentiev said that they hoped that Turkey would solve the problem of supplying water from the Euphrates to Syria as soon as possible. The Russian diplomat said, We brought up this issue in our meeting with our Turkish colleagues. They keep the situation under control and they explain this with the truly disastrous situation in the region, including Turkey. If so, it would mean that the electricity supply will be completely restarted in the very near future. We will hope so. In the joint statement made after the delegations of Russia, Iran and Turkey completed the 16th Astana talks on Syria in Nur Sultan, the capital of Kazakhstan. It was stated that the three countries would oppose the separatist plans in Syria in the east of the Euphrates River. The parties reaffirmed their determination to counter the separatist plans east of the Euphrates River, which aimed to undermine Syria's unity and threaten the national security of neighboring countries, the statement said. Pointing out that the parties have agreed that long-term security and stability in northeast Syria is possible only on the basis of the protection of the sovereignty and territorial integrity of this country, the parties said, the parties, on the pretext of combating terrorism, discussed the new realities, on the ground, including illegal attempts on autonomous administration. Rejected all attempts to create the delegations of Russia, Iran and Syria came together in Nur Sultan, the capital of Kazakhstan, for the 16th Astana talks on Syria. In the two-day meetings, the current situation in Syria, the delivery of humanitarian aid, the resumption of the work of the Syrian Constitutional Committee in Geneva, the convicts of prisoners. Confidence-building measures such as the exchange, the release of hostages and the search for missing persons were the main agenda items. In another article of the statement, it was noted that Russia, Iran and Turkey will continue to cooperate in order to completely destroy the terrorists in Syria, is as in other organizations. The document states, the parties will ultimately destroy is as, the Al-Nusra Front, Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, as well as any other individuals, organizations, businesses and entities associated with Al-Qaeda or as as, as well as any other terrorist groups deemed as such by the UN Security Council. Decided to continue cooperation for the purpose of protection and at the same time ensure the protection of civilians and civilian infrastructure in accordance with international human law. The parties also expressed their serious concern about the increasing presence and terrorist activities of the Hayat Tahrir al-Sham group and other terrorist organizations affiliated with it, which threatens the civilian population. In the statement, it was stated that Russia, Iran and Turkey consider it necessary to maintain calm in Syria's Idlib region and to fully fulfill the agreements on this issue. The parties evaluated the situation in the Idlib de-escalation zone in detail and underlined the need to maintain calm, on the ground, by fully fulfilling all existing agreements on Idlib. Emphasizing that Russia, Iran and Turkey do not accept the illegal seizure of Syrian oil and the transfer of proceeds from its sale, the statement said, Representatives of the Islamic Republic of Iran, the Russian Federation and the Republic of Turkey, which are the guarantor countries of the Astana format, reiterated their opposition to the illegal seizure and transfer of oil sales revenues that should have belonged to the Syrian Arab Republic. In another article of the statement, it was emphasized that Russia, Iran and Turkey condemned Israel's military attacks in Syria and that these attacks, which are a violation of international law, should be stopped. The parties condemned and called for an end to Israel's military attacks in Syria, which violate international law, international human law, the sovereignty of Syria and neighboring countries, and threaten stability and security in the region, the statement said. So how do you interpret Russia's latest moves in Syria and the messages from the Russia-Iran-Turkey summit? Do you think the US troops will withdraw from Syria with the insistence of Russia? You can share your comments with us and our other listeners. Don't forget to like our video and subscribe for our channel.